Hello and welcome back to Caribbean Online Learning. My name is Keisha Lewis and in this episode, I will be answering a CFC exam question on genetics and variation. This will be the first in three on this topic. So, let's begin. In this episode, we are answering the question from January 2013, question 5. The first part asks, define the terms gene and dominance. Now, this is a basic definition question. So, just give a basic definition. In this case, uh, you don't need to show any example because it's just to be fine. So for gene, the definition can be given here, a sequence of DNA that codes for a particular characteristic. At this level, you don't need to go into too much heavy scientific detail, so that's good enough. Now for dominance, it is a relationship between two or more alleles. Now notice, now you may look at the question and think, okay, dominance. And of course, the first point, the first thing that comes to your mind is dominant, that you know, have a dominant allele. But note, it says dominance. So it means it is a description of something with respect to the dominant allele. And the this word is used to describe the type of relationship between two or more alleles. It's the type of interaction alleles would have in a chromosome or in a cell to, that would then determine what shows up in your phenotype. Now, in this kind of um, relationship, in this kind of interaction, this is where you would have one allele being dominant over the other alley, which is then called recessive. So, so coming back to this one, dominance, it's a relationship between two or more alleles, also known as versions of the same gene. You get one mark for that. If the two alleles in the cells of an organism are different, the dominant allele would manifest in the organism's phenotype. Again, we say the recessive allele would not show up in the organism's phenotype, and it's thus hidden. So note in this question, you have to give the two. You have to explain the relationship, one with the other. You have dominant and recessive. Okay, so that's question part A. So let's move on to question part B. So, here we are at B. Hemophilia is a sex-linked disease. Mrs. Trimbage, how are for hemophilia? So, let's take a look at those two terms that I highlighted. This is a genetic disease caused by a gene that is carried on the sex chromosomes, XX and XY. So that's what they mean by sex-linked disease. And hemophilia is a defect in the blood's ability to clot. So let's go to the next part of the question. Explain what is meant by the term carrier. A carrier is an individual that has the disease-causing allele, brackets, version of a gene, what we talked about in part A, in their chromosomes without developing the disease themselves. They have the allele, but they don't show the disease. And remember, we just talked about dominance, dominant allele, recessive allele. So based on what we just talked about, that means that this disease-causing allele is recessive. So, an individual can have the allele in their chromosomes, but they would not show the disease because that would then be, it's showing up in the phenotype. So, because it's recessive, the phenotype does not show the disease. 
they become a carrier. They can therefore pass the disease on to their offspring. Right, so once the mother or father has the gene that is recessive, they can pass that recessive gene on to their offspring. And depending on what the other parent has, we can either as we can either end up with the disease or not. That's part B one. Part B two. Complete the following select square for a cross between Mrs. Trimbeach and her husband, who is normal. H represents the gene for normal blood clotting, as capital H, and common H represents the gene for abnormal blood clotting. Mrs. Trimbeach is X superscript capital H, X superscript common H, and her husband is X superscript capital H Y. So the next step will be to draw the Connect Square and show what a cross between these two people, what would they produce That's next. So let's get started with this Connect Square. Now as you can see, it's really a grid and we have our two genotypes XH, XH and XH, XY. Now the first thing we have to do with these two genotypes is to divide them into what, their, what the gametes would have because each of these represents what would be present in the cell and in the Punnett square we're going to write down the forms they would have in the gametes or the different arrangements that would be in the gametes. So this is so X, let's write this on the side, so set it up first. So the mother XH XH would produce XH and X H gametes. So half of her gametes would have just the dominant allele and half of her gametes would have just the recessive allele. For the father, we have X H and Y. And that would divide into X capital H and Y. So half of his gametes would have the dominant allele and the X chromosome and half of his gametes would have the Y chromosome and no allele at all. So let's put them here. So we can now sum the net squares. What, what they would do is put a line here, male, female. Now this is not absolutely required but you know let's just do the full thing so we have the open square we have male female on the male side we have x one column will have the x h and the other column would have y the female side we have x h and x h as well but the recessive version and now it's just a matter of recombination. So we are combining. So this square will be a combination of this and this. So these guys will combine to form X, H, F, H, and X, H. If we go down here, We go down here, we have XH from here and XH from here. So XH and XH. Now this square will be a combination of Y and X. So XH from here and Y from here. 
and this would have this square would have x small h and y. And those are your combinations. So we have four possibilities. We have the possibility of a girl, x, that girl would have both dominant alleles, or you can have a male with the combination XY, and their X chromosome would carry the dominant allele, or you can have a carrier, because in this case, the girl would have one of the dominant alleles and one with the recessive allele. And in this case, the boy, the male, would also have the recessive allele, but because there's nothing here to counteract it, he would develop the disease. And that's it for this part of the question. How would it be marked? Right. One mark, use of the, sim use of the symbols provided. By using the XX and XY chromosomes, it shows that the characteristic is sex-linked. If it was not sex-linked, it would look like this. Indicating whether it's sex-linked or not is important. You get two marks, so, so one mark, use of symbols as provided. They provided us with these symbols, and if you use it, those, you get a mark for that. Two marks for correct setup of the square with the gametes according to sex chromosome. So, by showing that you have also that you have the male on one side, female on the other side, you gain marks for that. And also by showing the combinations for the various sexes, whether male or female. Right? So for example, if you had done this and just put uh if you even like did this X H X H X, H, Y, and you had put something like H, 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 then H, H. This would not have been good, right? You want to show the full thing. Now let's move on to the next. And now for the last part of our question. So we just saw the Punnett square. And we just saw the various combinations that we were able to produce. So now let's look at the last part of this question. Describe the possible phenotype of their offspring. One male offspring would have a 50% 1 in 2 chance of having the disease. Female offspring would have a 0% chance of having the disease but a 50% chance of being a carrier. And overall, there's a 1 in 4, 25% chance of having a male offspring with the disease. Now, notice that um, I'm spelling it out in terms of male, female, and overall. Why? Because it's a sex-linked disease. If it wasn't a sex-linked disease, then it would be a straightforward well, you have a 1 in 4 chance of your child developing this disease. I think that applies to sickle cell anemia. You can say there's a 25% chance that your child will develop sickle cell anemia. Alright, so that's basically it. So, see you next lesson.